Hey everyone, long time I didn't provide an update to the NHL 94 AI project. Recently I've been able to put some time into it, so I want to share some progress. Uh, as you will see, the models now crush the in-game AI in the one-on-one -on -one mode. And I say models for Ness because one of the big changes I made is to apply machine learning only for a subtask of the problem, as opposed to having one big neural net that tries to score a goal directly with a complicated reward function that's hard to tweak. Uh, so I don't want to mean that uh, end -to -end, a big end-to-end -end model is is bad. It, it really depends on the context. But in any case, this, uh, this is a big topic and a subject uh, for another time. Uh, for now, I want to um, to discuss a bit about the interface before going to into the details of the, each of the models. Uh, so on the top right, you see code, defense zone, and scoring up, the three lines. Basically, that shows which part of the system is active. So currently, it's the scoring up model. That's why it's highlighted. And then uh, when it's this is grayed out, it means it's code. Because not everything needs machine learning. Sometimes it's just more efficient to directly do it in code. And now it's a defense zone model that's active. And below that, you see the reward function, like the, the green spikes. This shows uh, which rewards the punishment the, the, AI is, uh, the model is receiving if it was uh, in training. This helps, uh, helps me debug. So as you can see, the, the AI is not perfect. Uh, the opponent just scored a goal. But generally, it, it crushes the opponent. So 5 to 1 is, is still very strong. So back to the to uh, the model uh, section. So you see the input on the left side and the right side. Of course, is the output. The input. Uh, I made a bit. I made some changes. Uh, so as usual, there is the, the position and velocities, of course, of the player one, player two, and the, the puck. Also, the the positions of the goalie, opponent goalie. Uh, but I added something that uh, helped with the training performance is the if the, the player has puck or not, and if the goalie has puck or not, because it with just the puck position and the, the player position, it's hard to for the for the AI to know if it has a puck, uh, because um, sometimes the, the puck can be very close, but uh, actually it's the opponent that, ha that has it, and it's confused the AI. Eventually it can figure it out, but it, it takes uh, much more time, much much more training time. So uh, since I put these uh, these values and in input, uh, it's much better. And then on the right side, you see the confidence level of when it press a button, like which which button it's uh, it's most confident with. And. Um, as you see the, in this match, it's um, it scored five goal again, and the the match ends at the first period because it's easy easier to manage for training. But I could uh, end it at the third period; it would be the same thing. So uh, let's see the details about the the models. Let's start with the defense zone model. So the defense zone model's goal is to simply acquire the puck and keep the puck. So as you can see from the reward function, uh, the closer it gets to the uh, to the, the player, uh, the more reward it gets. We're going to see details in the code a bit later. And if uh, I successfully evade the, the AI, it gets some punishment. If I do a successful shot, also get some punishment, and obviously for a goal as well. So. As I shoot, you see there's a down spike. And now it got the puck, so it gets maximum rewards of 1.0. And uh, it tries to keep the puck. So when it gets, it's only made for a defense zone. So when it gets outside the defense zone, as you can see, uh, it doesn't work. But this, I handled that in code. So I only apply it when it's inside. Uh, so like, uh, like this type. And uh, as you notice, it tries to stay between the goalie and uh, and me, because it, uh, like I said, it uh, it tries to prevent shots or goals. 
because it lose point for it lose it gets penalties for that. So it's pretty aggressive and it's hard. Uh, it's pretty hard, especially with a keyboard. Even with a controller, it's it's not easy. So let's see the the reward function in code. So the first part of the function is to give gradual rewards as closer it gets to the puck and slight punishment if it gets away from the puck. So I don't want to give a too big punishment because sometimes it needs to go around the net and a bit further away from the puck uh, in the in the in that moment in order to, to catch the player. So I don't want to screw with, with that. Uh, also obviously it gives a uh, maximum reward for a body check because after that it's easier to it's easy to acquire the puck. Uh, one for passing, and this one is if it gets outside the zone, defense zone without the puck, that's obviously very bad. And at the beginning of training, it does that often, and it slows down training because when it's outside the zone, it's it's very hard to uh, to to catch up. Uh, I give a punishment for if the goalie has puck because that means uh, the opponent did a successful shot. Obviously, punishment for uh, for a goal and four shots as well. Next, let's see the scoring model. So this model's goal is actually not to score a goal or to shoot, but simply to apply the cross crease technique and um, uh, maximizing the chance of scoring. So basically when it uh, gets with the right speed, crosses with the right speed in front of the goalie, it gets some rewards as you can see in the, from the reward function on the right. And if it loses the puck, uh, it gets some uh, punishment. Let's see the details in the code. So first part of the function is that I give some punishment if the opponent gets the puck. Obviously, I also give some punishment if the, the puck leaves the attack zone because that's really bad. And the most interesting part is obviously the, uh, the scoring opportunity. So this is where I work for the cross crease. Um, the player needs to have the puck, of course. And uh, on the y-axis, it needs to be near the, the goalie. Also, it needs to have, needs to have decent, decent speed because to do the cross crease, to be effective, you need to be near the, the, the maximum speed in order to, to surprise the goalie. And for that, uh, I give a small but decent reward. And the uh, next part is if the, the puck is actually between the goalposts, this is where it's, uh, you know, it, it, it can actually start shooting, start thinking about shooting. Uh, this is where I give a bigger reward. Uh, this part, I still need to tweak. I'm not sure if it's working quite well, but I try to, uh, to quantify the opening on the net. Like if there's a big difference between the, the, the position of the puck and the, on the x-axis and the in the position of the of the goalie uh the bigger opening i want to give a, a bigger reward but i still need to tweak this part but overall this this reward function is what i, I use to uh, to demonstrate the the videos in the videos so it works uh, quite well next topic i want to discuss is about the changes i made to the training data so for example for the scoring model uh, we can now randomize the player position at the beginning of each session uh, as, a, as opposed to before where uh, you get the positions from the, the game states and uh, this results uh, in a much more uh, varied data uh, and if you work with machine learning you know that uh, quality data is super important uh, probably uh, often more important than the, than the model and uh, the reason we can do that uh, before is that uh, the functionality was not exposed in Retro. It was always there uh, to be able to set values in RAM because of the integration tool, but uh, it was not exposed in the, the Python API. So I, I did, uh, it was just a small change. I submitted the, the PR to uh, the stable Retro fork if you want to use it. I'll put the, the link uh, down below. Just show you quickly what I mean by randomizing initial positions. So, uh, as you can see, like it always starts in a different position each time. So, the, the, the AI sees much more varied scenarios more quickly. And uh, the result is a much better performance. So, that's it for now. 
I'll go into more details in future videos. But in the meantime, uh, if you um, if you want to check out the code or you want to uh, to reproduce the, the examples I give in the in this video, you can go on my GitHub. I'll put the link down below, and uh, also included the the pre-trained models here, so you can uh, reproduce exactly the exact same results as in the, in this video. Uh, also, if you try the, the the to play against the AI and you find some big flaws. Uh, you can comment down below or write directly to me and I can try to, uh, to fix those. If you have any feedback or you want to have ideas of what I should do in the next step, uh, feel free to uh, tell me as well. Uh, so uh, speaking of the next step, uh, I think uh, I'm going to try the two-on-two -on -two one, which has uh, another layer of uh, complexity where you need to have uh, taken into account multiple players and uh, passing as well. So that should be uh, quite interesting. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.